We started getting interested in frog vision just by looking around the collection that we have here at the Natural History Museum. Frogs have very different shapes and sizes of eyes. Many are nocturnal, so we think this might relate to how well they can see in the dark. We're really interested in looking at what light does to the eye to better understand frog and toad vision. And this involves collaboration with vision specialist Ron Douglas here in London. Vision is very complex and we have to understand many different stages. So in this particular project, I'm looking at the colors of light which get through the lens. So in addition to the work in the collection, we're actually collecting new specimens that we can work with. We spent about four weeks looking for frogs, which involved a lot of nighttime surveys. So in the field, we actually had a makeshift dark lab. We would dissect a frog eye for examination on our microscope. And this gives us a range of colors the animal may be able to see. But there's more to it than that. We have to look at which wavelengths, which colors get through the lens, because they can stop certain wavelengths reaching the retina. We place it within a spectrophotometer, which scans through the visible spectrum from the red all the way down to ultraviolet, determining which wavelengths get blocked by the lens. So now we've got two lenses on the screen. The blue one lets through lots of ultraviolet light that's very different to the species in the red line, which cuts off all light in the ultraviolet, and rather like humans, will not see ultraviolet light. It's really neat to see these two patterns because that helps us interpret the other data that we're collecting. Many of the species which let ultraviolet through to the retina are nocturnal, whereas many which cut out the UV are day active. Nocturnal animals probably benefit from having lenses that let through ultraviolet light. This is exciting because it suggests that frog vision is much more diverse than we thought when we started this project. Looking at all of that diversity is incredibly important to understanding the evolution of vertebrate vision, including our own vision as human beings.